All right, uh, so for the next class in my school, the John David Ebert School for the Study of Culture, Cosmology, and the Arts, uh, beginning on Saturday, July 22nd uh, at noon MST, uh, for eight Saturdays in a row until uh, September 9th, uh, we will be doing Ulysses. So we'll be reading through uh, James Joyce's 1922 masterpiece. And Ulysses is, it, it's a very rare kind of book because it's not just, it's not just a great book. It is the greatest book ever written in the entirety of the 20th century. And that's one of the few things that I think I agree with, with the literary establishment. Uh, they pretty much agree with me on that. Although actually I, I do think Finnegan's Wake is, is the better book and the greater achievement, but that's a very intimidating uh, text. We are going to read Finnegan's Wake as well after we're done with Ulysses. So right now we're finishing up uh, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Uh, we have one more class on that next weekend. And so that will be six classes total. For anyone who missed that class for a mere hundred dollars, you can subscribe to it and I can send you all six of those uh, video classroom discussions. Each one is two hours in length. Um, <clears throat> if you want to catch up, if you, you still, have, still have a week to go uh, to read through Portrait of the Artist, uh, to which I highly recommend reading first before diving into Ulysses because it's not an easy read. And a lot of people are attracted to it simply because of its reputation for how difficult it is, but also uh, its re repeated obscenities, uh, which really aren't obscenities. Um, there's only one sex act that takes place in the book uh, that I can think of. Um, all of the other sex that's in the book occurs in people's heads. Uh, they're, they're having thoughts because Joyce is trying to capture an accurate representation of how people think when they're out and about. Um, so Ulysses takes place uh, in one day from with Stephen Dedalus, who is Joyce's alter ego, uh, waking up at Martello Tower with his two companions, Buck Mulligan and the, and the British guy who is colonizing Ireland by collecting its, its, its folklore. And um, <clears throat> the three of them wake up and then they uh, proceed, they separate and they all go about their day with their adventures and uh, the various things that happen to them. And of course, as the title indicates, Ulysses is not a naturalistic novel, it's a mythological novel. Uh, I got into a debate with a professor, a deconstructionist idiot, a uh, professor who tried to tell me that Ulysses is a naturalistic novel. Apparently you forgot the title. Ulysses is a mythological figure. It is the Latin name for Odysseus. And so it's based uh, kind of like a mock epic on the Odyssey with Stephen in the role, Stephen Dedalus in the role of Telemachus, uh, whose mother Penelope tells him, go find your father. Um, so that means not just the literal father, but it means find your vocation as a young man, uh, who in this case is Odysseus. And in the case of Joyce's novel will be just a common average everyday fellow named Leopold Bloom. Um, who is a misfit because he's a Jew uh, living in Catholic Ireland, so he doesn't fit in any better than Stephen does as an ex-Catholic. By the time of Ulysses, he's no longer in the church. And uh, he becomes a symbolic father for him. But the two don't meet until the very end of the book, the second to last chapter, when they both have gone through their day and they meet uh, for... Leo asks him to come up and have a cup of tea. He looks like he's standing out there and... He, you kind of feel sorry for the kid. He's maybe, I don't know, 23, 24, 25, something like that. And um, <clears throat> invites him in and has, gives him a cup of tea. And they talk about nothing, just some pleasantries. But the encounter changes both of their lives. And Joyce gives all kinds of implications to show you how it changes both of them. This father at one atonement between uh, Stephen, who is completely disillusioned with his real father, whom he despises and loathes. Uh, but he likes Leo. Leo makes him laugh. He's a simple guy. Uh, nothing complicated about him, really. Um, and so some people complain that Ulysses is a, no it's a novel in which nothing ever happens. You missed the novel. Go back and read it again. All kinds of things are going on in this novel. It's just they occur in people's heads uh, as they're going about the day. Um, it matters when Leo goes up to his wife, Molly Bloom, who has spent the day cheating on him, and he goes up to bed with her, and we end the book with her stream of consciousness as she's falling asleep. We're following, we're following the river, like the Liffey, of her consciousness as it goes off into dreamland. Uh, she starts thinking about Stephen. Um, he feels a little bit attracted to him. And it changes how she feels about her husband, Leopold. 
she she thinks to herself as she's falling asleep. Leo was kind of like that when he was young. They have both lost a child, uh, an eleven year old child, uh, years ago. Um, so there's this gap there missing. Uh, that semiotic vacancy for Leo is filled by Stephen, uh, just as Leo fills the semiotic vacancy of the father for uh, Stephen Dedalus. And uh, my, it changes Molly's opinion of her husband, and, and Joyce makes it very clear that most likely that simple little encounter in which nothing happened has changed their lives and very probably saved their marriage. So uh, it's a spectacular book. It's magnificent. It, um, especially for people who love English literature. Ulysses belongs in the same category with Moby Dick and with uh, Paradise Lost, with uh, Hamlet and King Lear, um, Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. That's the tradition that it belongs in, that it comes out of. Not the one-dimensional 19th century naturalistic novel that Joyce, only, only Dubliners fits in that category. Joyce left that behind. Um, so we're going to go through this monster. Um, and then for the more, the more um, those of you who are not intimidated by Finnegan's Wake, we're, we're going to do that monstrosity as well. So it'll be eight weeks, and there's 18 chapters. So I've divided them up. We will most likely read chapters one and two, I think, when we meet uh, on July 22nd, because those two chapters aren't very difficult to read. Uh, it's chapter three, where it's the point in the movie where you start getting walkouts, and you start hearing uh, theater seats, and people getting up and walking out. It's chapter three, uh, but we can we can solve that. Um, we can get over it because of all of its philosophical vocabulary. Uh, Joyce has metabolized Schopenhauer and Nietzsche and Indian philosophy. He's completely mastered uh, Indian philosophy. Um, those things are prerequisites for really understanding Stephen's thoughts as he's wandering along the beach by himself. Um, so we'll cover all 18 chapters. Uh, the price for this co course is $250. Uh, we will also begin... Uh, a class on the evolution of media studies that starts this weekend, um, which is also $250, in which we will go through Harold Ennis and especially Marshall McLuhan, which is apropos, the timing is perfect because uh, Joyce was McLuhan's favorite author, uh, as he was also Joseph Campbell's favorite author. And um, so we'll go through that and Walter Ong, uh, people who are influenced by McLuhan, also Willem Flusser, who develops a media studies tradition entirely independently of the Toronto School. Uh, where it really was invented in the 1950s. Uh, Flusser uh, was a little bit late. It's not until the 1970s that he starts getting going on media theory. So we'll look at Willem Flusser as well, and possibly also Neil Postman, <clears throat> and definitely Leonard Schlein's book, The Alphabet Versus the Goddess, and then my own book, The New Media Invasion. Um, I knew Leonard Schlein, and I loved his book, and I, I read his book and told him how great I thought it was. And uh, he read my book, Celluloid Heroes and uh, Mechanical Dragons, and he, he loved that. And um, so it's apropos that we end with, with Schlein and, and my own book, which tries to bring media studies up to date as far as examining phenomena like the Internet goes. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, so we'll, we'll be doing Ulysses. And uh, this is the enrollment page. Uh, the button here is to enroll. And uh, then you're in. All right. I'll see you in class.